Hello, everyone. I'm Noemi Esparza Isaacson. I'm very happy to be with you today. I'm a visual artist, digital technology artist, ceramicist, and also recording artist. Today's lesson will be all about Huichol yarn art painting. Today we'll use the basic techniques of creating huichol and some of the things we have at home to create a huichol self-portrait. And you can see it there in the drop camera. This is what we will be creating. This is a somewhat abstract uh, portrait of me. and. The idea be behind Wichol is to try and fin fill in all the areas that you can with the yarn. I left the face open because I kind of liked that feel, but when you create yours, you, you should fill up the entire thing. You will need scissors, a pencil, you will need some cardstock. It doesn't really matter what it is but I recommend a four by six because it is kind of laborious to get all of the yarn uh, glued in place and of course we need our yarn <laughs> bold bright colors now these are the yarns that I had at home you want to find yarn that is strong and thinner and not too fluffy so for now I have colors that have a lot of contrast you will use a darker color for the outline of the face and also maybe a darker, co darker color for your eyebrows. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we will do is we will draw a face. Now, when we're drawing faces, there's some proportions that we have to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and apply some of those guidelines. We'll take our card and remember I said we're drawing kind of an egg, upside down egg. And then remember we have this line down the middle and then a hairline up here and then we have this division there and then another halfway point here. <coughs> so let's look at our other piece here. I started with the nose. And to draw the nose, I kind of do this little squiggle thing like that, the nostril area. Since this is the bottom of the eye, we kind of want to shape the eye here. And then one of these eyebrows can kind of go over that eye and it comes down a little bit to make the nose. Even it out on the other side. Next thing you'll want to do is add the eyeball. I usually come in and kind of it hangs off the eyelid. So then what I do is I kind of add one line here to widen the eye and then I fill in this bottom line to close out the eye and then I connect these two sections. Remember this is just kind of a light sketch. Then we can round out kind of this nostril area and fill in and then depending on if your nose is a little bit wider if it's pointy then I, I I'll draw this circle here that represents the tip of the nose you want to make sure it's right on top of that right above this line where our lips are you're going to go up and down and down and just make kind of a little curve a little curve too that's the top of the lip and then you go you'll follow that same shape like so and then we'll fill in this bottom part of the lip but we don't really want to go across okay like so and then lastly we can add some hair depending on what your hair looks like try and kind of make it similar I have long hair so I'm 
kind of adding long hair like so. The ears are right even with the corner of your eyes. That's where they start. So then they would curve out like so. I'm going to just make some quick corrections to the chin. And, and yeah, so we have a face here, okay? Step is we'll take, I like to use a like a darker color yarn and you'll find the edge of it and what you want to do is see how long that eyebrow is and you want to cut two of them and then going forward all you're doing is you're filling in you're filling in these areas with glue and then applying the yarn I've been using my pencil to kind of position them once they're in place and that way I'm not getting my my um, fingers full of glue and then the next thing I'm gonna do are the lips and for the lips it's it is really important to follow the line of so you want to take the time to kind of curve this side down push this in and really get the shape of that upper lip. All right, so it kind of looks like a mustache right now, but it won't in a little bit. Now we will fill in this bottom section. And then we need one more little piece inside. It doesn't have to be too big, but it's just kind of the separation of the upper and lower lip and then you can move things around a little bit to help shape it okay next we will add this section here of the nose hopefully I have the right length and we do want to make sure that it curves out just a little bit there and that it joins with the top of the eyebrow now for the eyes I'm actually going to change colors and use this because it'll give us a nice contrast And for now, I'm just going to leave it long. I'll come back and cut it in just a little bit. And for the eye, try and go a little bit outside of the line because if you go a little too close, then the eye seems to kind of close off a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry before I trim, before I trim the edges. Again, I'll look at... Okay, so we're kind of getting there. Now the inside of the eye will just be a circular piece of yarn. Right now she just looks like a superhero. We'll close out the eye a little bit. So, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So just take your time to make that full circle and use your pencil to kind of put, reposition the yarn and make sure that it's sticking. So she's kind of coming to life, right? Now we're going to follow this little curve on the nose because that's a really important area here. And again, take your time to position the yarn in the way that it should be shaped. If you do that, you'll be really pleased with the result. Just, I think I'm going to do this part here first. And 
do the face. I think I will. So go ahead and trace the face with the glue. I wonder if I, wonder if I cut enough of this. Go all the way to well, the corner of your eye. And that's kind of where I'm gonna cut that. And I like what's happening to the face. And remember, use your pencil. Use your pencil, look at yourself in the mirror. Make sure that you're matching your face. I'm digging that. So now let's measure our hair, see how much hair we need. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cut several of these. And then we're just gonna add glue here, position the hair. I kind of needed it to be a little longer, but hopefully I can correct it with the next piece. If not, we'll fill it in. Something I like to do is to like hold that piece in place while I turn the other one. And the more meticulous you get with this, the better results you will get. Because you wanna really get the, the yarn tight and um, so just keep working like this. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the camera so you can see uh, the rest of the project kind of. On the ends of the hair going forward I'm gonna I'm gonna cut um, pieces of yarn that are a little bit longer that way I can trim them nice and neatly on the bottom so what's great about this project is it really doesn't take a lot of yarn uh, but it's a really beautiful result and you could make one for each member of the family and maybe give them away as Christmas gifts or um, birthday gifts. I know that your parents would enjoy this type of gift or maybe you wanna make this for your children. I think this is a project that is great for any age and, and I gotta say, it's really relaxing. I'm gonna hold the spot here where I turn around with my pencil and then I'm going to curve this around here and cover all of those kind of open areas and that makes it a little bit more aesthetically and then just work out these little areas as they dry come back push this Together. And I'm going to go ahead and trim these pieces at the bottom, and that gives you a nice finished look. What's great about using the fluid glue, like the Elmer's, is that you have a little bit of work time. And now I'll come up here and kind of clean up this little section. And join that piece of yarn with so there we have our Wichol yarn art and if you want to you can continue filling in all of these sections oh I think that's really cool by by moving in the the yarn I kind of made these little waves I'm kind of digging that so hopefully you'll fill in the base 
and I'm going to come back here and just draw kind of a, all right, so she has a neck. We have to do that part too. And I was thinking I might experiment with this bolder color around the background and kind of see where it goes. So I'm taking these longer pieces of yarn and you just want to take it around, make sure you're Hitting the glue and then cut. Seems like I need a little glue here. And then we do it again. Make sure you have plenty of glue as you go around. I like how this, because it's a um, gradient kind of effect on the whole yarn. So as you go around, you get like different colors that kind of near one another. And it's kind of an unexpected look. It almost looks like my hair is rainbow colored. Okay, at this part, and that should be kind of the last piece I need to put on that end. Now I'm kind of using my whole hand. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in a pretty big section here so I can weave back and forth. Weave. Those little loops kind of have to be tightened to wait the turn backs. So make sure you tighten those as you turn around. Sometimes some of these yarns are synthetic and so they don't really like the glue. <laughs> it almost seems like they repel it, like here. So you gotta go heavy and just hold it down with a pencil or something till it like responds. Wow. It's a little bit laborious to do this, but it maybe gives you time to meditate, time to think about life, your dreams, your aspirations, and all these sections, the face, the neck. And why don't you experiment with Maybe going zigzag or having the yarn go up and down. This other one I did, I just filled in the top and the neck, but I kind of like this exposed area. And maybe I'll use watercolor to fill in the rest. Don't forget to go back and erase all of your sketch marks. And you can still play around with this more and get uh, you know, further, further uh, decorate it with watercolors or with markers, or um, maybe you've got some decorative papers. So really the sky's the limit, but this is kind of the starting point. I hope you had a good time creating your Wichol yarn art um, self-portraits. I had an awesome time uh, sharing this technique with you and sharing this project with you. I've seen a lot of, um, of this type of artwork and it is really beautiful. If you ever have a chance to see it in person, it's, it's really mind blowing how intricate and how colorful and vibrant it is. So this is your Wichol yarn art self-portrait. Good job, everybody. I'm so proud of you. Don't worry about fussing over the yarn. 
just do your best and you'll see that it'll just start to come together and you'll get some really cool unexpected results. Thank you everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me and making a retour yarn ourselves.